man spends 18 long years in prison, most of that time on death row for a murder he did not even commit. John Thompson, there he is, was convicted of back-to-back -back armed robbery and murder, but prosecutors in New Orleans had withheld critical evidence in his trial, and after finally gaining his freedom, he sued, winning a $14 million jury verdict. But Thompson's not going to see a penny of it. Why? The Supreme Court has just overturned his victory. Is that the right decision? Joining us now, David Wool and Rachel Self, both defense attorneys. Uh, this requires just a little bit of explanation. Thompson was weeks away from being executed when it was discovered that prosecutors never turned over to the defense the crime lab report and then later it was discovered a police report of an eyewitness both were exculpatory that is to say they could prove that thompson was actually innocent and prosecutors by law are required to hand it over there were eight other pieces of exculpatory evidence rachel what happened to thompson is a despicable injustice isn't it I absolutely agree. Hi, Greg. Hi, David. This thing, Greg, reads like a John Grisham novel, except for John Grisham would have gotten the ending right. I find this entire case so bothersome. And we've got prosecutors that failed to turn over blood evidence. We have deathbed confessions letting them know that he failed to turn over the blood evidence. Then we have a further prosecutor hiding that for five additional years. We have an 18-year cover-up, 14 years of which he was on in isolation on yeah. death row. An investigator does an 11th hour investigation, finds this stuff on microfiche, goes forward with it. Right. And then we have, we have the, the district attorney saying that, that he was right in all this. And I just yeah. find it so offensive. You know what? I don't but, know a single DA. Here's the deal. The prosecutors are, who did this are despicable people. If I had my way, they'd be on death row. But David, I actually think the Supreme Court in throwing out the $14 million verdict, got it right. I think you agree. Explain. Yeah, well, Greg, the bottom line was there's a cutoff of liability in this case, and it's sort of a technical issue. Basically, what these DAs did was something so fundamental, something you learn in the first five minutes of law school, turning over exculpatory or evidence that proves innocence to the defense. They didn't do that. So bottom line, they were not going to hold the district attorney and his office responsible for that. They also said it was akin to criminal conduct that was so egregious. Right. And so they weren't so that cuts off liability from the DA himself. Well, I think that this was the appropriate decision for the Supreme Court because of that. He could ask for a federal civil rights investigation. Right. He could sue the prosecutors individually and collect from them. You know, but as far as this hyper-technical issue goes, right. it was correct. Rachel, one of the prosecutors in the case, one of the bad guys, made this deathbed confession to his colleague that he had hidden the blood report from the defense. That means, Rachel, it was deliberate, which means this isn't a case of negligent training, as Thompson alleged in his $14 million lawsuit. Well, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I got to tell you, I don't know a single DA that would have withheld 10 pieces of exculpatory information. And um, Mr. But that's deliberate. Was already it's not himself. negligence on the well, part of but, the elected DA. It's a deliberate well, act you need by to look an at that elected DA. I think you need to look at that elected DA's history. And Mr. Connick himself had previously, while he was a practicing attorney, been federally indicted for exactly this type of practice. You have the case of Kyles v. Whiteley, which was a few years prior, in which they overturned for Louisiana having this, this exhaustively disgusting practice of withholding exculpatory information. And yeah, I think that you problem. look at the top. Yeah, Greg. D here's David, the I want to ask you about it. The, the, the elected DA, we should mention, he is Harry Connick. Uh, the father of the yeah. famous actor and musician, uh, and his office has been previously chastised by none other than the U.S. Supreme Court for similar stuff, one of the worst records in the country for mishandling evidence. Doesn't that suggest a systemic failure or pattern of conduct that Connick was intentionally indifferent to the constitutional rights of this defendant? Yeah, and I think it does. But the deal was in this case, Greg, that these prosecutors' conduct was so criminal. I mean, seven different times this man was on the verge of being executed and he was granted a reprieve. If what these guys did, these prosecutors did, had resulted in his execution, the possible punishment for that would have been the prosecutors being executed themselves if they were found to have been uh, engaging in that type of criminal homicide. That's how egregious it was, and that's why the court, in essence, cut off liability and said while the, the prosecutors themselves are responsible for this, the DA himself 
is not because they don't have a lot of general day-to-day -day yeah. control over the ministerial actions you know, of the deputy district attorneys. So in this right. very narrow issue, it was Rachel, right. You know, Rachel Connick himself was indicted by federal prosecutors at one point in time for suppressing a lab report of the kind hidden from Thompson in this case. Is it possible that Connick created this culture of misconduct in his office? Absolutely. And I and I think that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And I was very troubled by the quote of Connick, which said he was delighted with this outcome of this case, because I think that anyone who's interested in justice would yeah. never use the word delighted to find the, the for the yeah. findings of the it Supreme gotta Court. Got to leave it here. at that, guys. We're yeah. out of time. That's Rachel Self, okay. David Wool. Good to see you both. Thank you. You, you too. Thank you. Oh, we are.